We're live. All right. Welcome, everyone, to a new episode of Electric Podcast. I'm Fred Lambert, your host, and I'm joined by Seth with How are you doing this week, Seth? I'm good, Fred. All right. Uh, we have a um, pretty big week of uh, news of EV and Tesla news to discuss, uh, partly because of the uh, Frankfurt Auto Show that brought us a few new EVs that we're going to discuss later on. But first off, uh, we have um, a lot of testing news that happened this week. I would argue that the biggest one is about the, even though we heard or heard about the new Model S stuff and the, the new plate powertrain and stuff, I would argue that the biggest news this week is actually about Tesla battery cells. Uh, we first posted that right after the last podcast, so that was actually last weekend, but uh, a few more information trickled out uh, during the week. Uh, Jeff Dunn's team, so Jeff Dunn is Tesla's battery research partner out of um, Halifax. They released a new paper, and uh, that paper is uh, um, basically unveiling a, a new battery prototype, battery cell prototype that they have that they've been testing over the last few years. Uh, they've been testing the cycling capability of the battery for longevity, and they believe that that battery with a similar performance uh, of current lithium-ion battery cells that Tesla use, but with much longer longevity, talking about something that would enable mm, over a million miles, over 1.6 million kilometers of use without any major battery degradation. All right. So how do you do that? The battery cell that they describe in this is... Um, a regular lithium-ion cell, but using a single crystal NMC cathode. So it's a different uh, NMC. Uh, of course, Tesla use NMC right now mostly for uh, uh, its stationary energy product. But they've been speculation that they could move with higher performance cells like this to um, also for vehicles. And the research paper talks also about vehicles. So it's not exactly 100% sure that it's going to be vehicles, but I have it on good authority. Excuse me. <coughs> I have it on good authority that's for sure going to be and going to end up in Tesla as an energy storage products and most likely also in Tesla's vehicles. So this single crystal M cathode is the big difference. Also used with a, a new advanced electrolyte. And that's where things change it, change a little bit. So there's um, this electrolyte coating that they use for, for this particular cells. Um, the, um, they've tested it on over a bunch of different conditions and, uh, going up to 40 degrees Celsius, it was still lasting about 4,000 cycles, which is about twice what Tesla's current cells are lasting at the same rate. And um, But of course, you, you really get the cells at 40 uh, at forty Celsius. I mean, Tesla use a, a cooling system for its battery. They use a thermal management system. And, <coughs> well, excuse me, I'm still sick this week. Uh, so with the thermal management system, you can actually keep the batteries in a, in a cooler environment, closer to 20 degrees Celsius, which is optimal. And doing that, they were able to make the battery last over 6,000 cycles without any major um, uh, battery degradation, battery capacity. By any major, I mean like 90, uh, per, uh, 90% battery capacity. Uh, we we already seeing some good uh, capacity retention in Tesla vehicles, like even older ones in 2012 or something. But we're seeing uh, around 90% uh, starting at around like 200,000 miles and things like that, uh, which is still pretty good. But now we're seeing about 90% after 6,000 cycles, and 6,000 cycles would put you way over a million miles. So <laughs> that's a big difference here. And um, I. That and that news, that paper comes as uh, just a few months ago. Elon was talking about making Tesla vehicle last a million miles. He says the Model Three was developed as a commercial vehicle to last a million miles, except for the battery modules, which he expects to last three hundred thousand miles to five hundred thousand miles. Yeah, and yeah. it's probably not a coincidence that he's talking about a million miles, and his battery research arm is developing a cell that can last a million miles. For sure, that's uh, that was well, was, when was started 2016? I think when the, the research partnership was started with uh, Jeff Dunn, 
And one of the goals of the research uh, research partnership was make our batteries last longer. Uh, so Elon has been thinking about that for a long time and is thinking because you know, a lot of people are thinking also like a million miles, all right? Like uh, who the hell keeps their car for a million miles? The idea is um, Tesla is pushing Arch on the self-driving front and a, a shared fleet of self-driving vehicles. And so like a Uber-like service with all electric Tesla vehicles driving themselves. And the big advantage when you do that is like the cost per mile goes way down. So then the differentiating factors between cars, between services like that, because there's going to be competing services like Tesla is planning to do with the Tesla network. Um, it's going to compete on cost. And the different factor was going to be how long those vehicles last going to have a big effect on the cost because the cost, of course, of the drivers just goes way down because it's a self-driving driver. Um, the cost of the fuel goes way down because it's electric, and then it's also um, same for everybody else. So the different factor is going to be the uh, um, uh, amortiz um, amortizing. Is that is that the word? Yeah, amortizing the cost e. of the vehicle over yeah. its operating amortization yeah. of the vehicle over um, its life cycle. So you want the life cycle to be as long as you as you can make it to be. And Tesla is aiming for a million mile of it, which is uh, and, pretty, and a million yeah. miles in a robo taxi isn't you know a decade. It's probably a few years because those things are going all day and night, every day, seven days a week. Except for charging. Days. Yeah, I mean they have to charge, and theoretically, like not too many people are going to need rides at three a.m. Uh, so maybe they're idling, you know, a few hours in the evening, um, or you know, obviously charging, but. Um, you know, like during the day, that there's no reason for them to be to stop working. If they're robo taxis, they don't need to take lunch. They don't need to do any of this stuff that current Ubers and taxis do. So they're just going to be driving and driving and driving. Yeah, and cleaning a little bit probably, like you know, it's a bit. <laughs> also at night probably. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, that came out on well, I think Friday, uh, Friday or Saturday. The, the the paper came out. Then uh, we just posted today. That Tesla filed for a patent for a very similar batteries, a battery cell. Of course, they, they applied for that patent way before the paper was released. So of course, there's the chronology here matters because you don't release a paper and then file for a patent after that. But it's just to show that it's not because when I posted that, I, I, I made a big deal out of it when I posted the, the paper because I'm told from sources that this is a big deal. This is a, a, a very important product for Tesla, especially within the context that Tesla has been pushing to manufacture its own battery cells. Um, so it, it's a new product line for Tesla, really. And of course, the, the Tesla naysayers, the shorts, all, they all said, yeah, it's just a research paper. First of all, it wasn't just a research paper. It's a research paper on test results of battery cells prototypes so it's not vaporware and then today tesla well the the, the patent office release this is patent is patent application for uh not the exact same battery cells but uh, the same cells that an nmc um 532 so that the same uh single crystal cathode so, and uh one of the same electrolyte uh, the same electrolyte with one additional additive to it and uh, that's another thing that we've been reporting on for a while that Jeff Don and his team have been working on for Tesla is uh, those adding additives to the electrolyte. And they've been doing that, but the, the industry has been doing that for a while, but they, they do it with many different electrolytes. And it's like a guessing game almost what works and whatnot because it's not, not everyone understand really how they act together, uh, but... Jeff Dunstein believe that they found two. Just they can reduce the number of additives to just two, so it's a more simple thing that they can understand uh, easier, and it still has a major impact on on the battery cell's performance. So they were talking about a battery cell that is cheaper again because they they, they use fewer additives, but also enhanced performance, and again as we just reported, increases the lifetime of the battery cell. So Tesla applied for a patent for that. Um, well, they applied for it last year, but it was published uh, today. So we uh, reported on it today. Just curious how you find the uh, patents. Uh, I remember there was that tool that uh, that guy showed me a while ago. Are you using that, or do you just search, or what? Or well, proprietary uh, secret uh, there, info? 
Yeah, I mean, it's all public information. I just have um, my alerts, things that I set up, page alerts that if a page changes or something, and um, on uh, the Patents Office website, when when this uh, has a new patent coming up, it just shows up for me. But then, you know, anyone can just go to their website and, and, and search for it. Um, of course, you have to uh, make your search work with <laughs> uh, Tesla as a company because, of course, Tesla, Nikola Tesla has a bunch of pattern. There's also a bunch of other companies that are called Tesla or a variation of Tesla something. So you have to check out for, for Tesla Inc. Or in this case, actually, it's a Tesla Motors Canada because uh, it was filed with uh, uh, the partnership with Jeff Don is uh, with uh, Tesla's Canadian uh, division. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, the more interesting thing for a lot of people, because battery technology isn't necessarily interesting, although it produces interesting things, was that uh, Elon decided that he's going to take the next generation Model S to the Nür Nürburgring uh, and try to beat Porsche's record, where we assume, although he didn't say that. Outright. He didn't outright say that, yeah. So I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. Now I'm not sure anymore if it, that was really like it was clear because he, he just tweeted another thing about Porsche and then he tweeted that, oh, by the way, we're bringing a little S to the Nurbur ring. ring. Uh, but then since, since then, we we now, and that's the news we're going to discuss, Tesla has announced the new played powertrain and a new ch chassis prototype too. And Tesla also brought other things, other version of Model S in their ring. So we're thinking maybe it's just uh, to test their own things because especially if it's not a product a production car, then they cannot even claim the record from uh, uh, from Porsche. Right, for a production car. Yeah. You know, a four-door sedan production car. But, you know, they could always later on say, all right, we're going to make, you know, 100. Because Porsche isn't going to sell a ton of the Turbo S's. Uh, Tesla could say, oh, we're going to make, you know, a hundred or two hundred or five hundred, a thousand of the special Nurbur ring record uh, Teslas for collectors, and they could probably sell them for a hundred sixty thousand less than Porsche sells theirs for, and still mm. still be fine. I, I'd argue that they don't even need to do that because uh, this new played powertrain that we're talking about here, uh, which is the, the the three motor powertrain that Tesla first released in the prototype. Uh, New Roadster, next gen Roadster. Now it sounds like they are making it, making it fit in the new chassis prototype for the Model S. And um, Elon says that this is coming next year for Model S, Model X, and the new Roadster. So if it's coming next year, I mean, I, I'm not exactly clear what's the timeline for the the, the taken. I know I know the taken is not going to be in North America this year, so it's going to be next year anyway. I assume that there're going to be some deliveries in Nor in uh, Europe by the end of this year though. But uh they might not be that far out from uh, <laughs> like the plate and, and the and the taken at least in the US. So uh if, if they do break the record with the um with the plane the Mol S plate powertrain it, it could make sense that uh, we accept the record as beating beating the, the top production taken. And then, like you said too, it's like it's it's apple to oranges too, just with the pricing of it. Uh, right. That uh, fully fully equipped, you're gonna run like two hundred thousand dollars for that. Uh, that taken, so yeah, and, appar and apparently uh, the one that they're testing. So I I never got an answer for you on this one, but um, Elon said it was a seven seater in a reply to somebody. Yeah. Is it is it just that the Tesla can have seven seats, or is it that the actual car going around the track is outfitted with seven seats? And if so, are they the, the jump seats in the back, or is there some kind of new seat configuration? Uh, none of that is one hundred percent clear from what Elon said. Well, we're all going from what Elon said, and we there's been a bunch of pictures of the cars coming up, but they are blacked out windows and everything, so we don't we don't really see well inside what's going on. Uh, one car has apparently been spotted with a roll cage, so like even that like it looks very prototype. Uh, what Elon said is that one uh, Model S and uh, numbering that they brought to numbering, and they, they brought a bunch of different Model S numbering. One of them 
is a seven uh, what, what did he say exactly he said as seven seats and then he answered to someone like someone like some but why and he answered to sit seven people um so we're speculating a little bit here but i would assume that it would be very sneaky for elon like to to if the car has just two jump seats in the back like like it used to be an option for the Model S. It would be sneaky for Elon to use that and sing seven seat because Tesla used to say five seats plus two because it's only for for children in the back. So I would assume that he's talking about seven seat for seven people. So seven people would mean like possibly seven adults, uh, which uh, is not impossible if Tesla managed to fit seven uh, like three rows of uh, in the Model Y. I'm sure they could do it for the Model S. However, the question yeah. is, it, wh why? Well, so the, the guy, the, the guy was at a, a fair question. Of course, you don't take, take it as a joke, but it's a fair question. Is is it just for the Nurburgring thing? And even then, like, why would you do it for the Nurburgring? It makes no sense. And then, if it's not just for the Nurburgring, and they actually plan to bring that to production, there's still a question: of Why? Why would you want that for the Model S? I mean, the Model S is is, is a sedan. Uh, even even the jump seat option. I mean, I, I know it was very useful for a few people, yourself included. Mm -hmm. But uh, they discount they, they discontinued the, the feature because it wasn't selling well at all. And um, I don't, especially after they introduced the Model X. And I think it's still the case. If you want a seven seater Tesla, you go with Model X, not not a Model S. Model S is or by good. the time this is released, Model Y. Yeah. Also, yeah. But uh, good point. Because by that time you're gonna have the Model Y, so you're gonna have two options with the third row. So the the S won't makes much sense for that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what they they're doing that. So a lot a lot of question this week with what was announced with uh, with this new play the powertrain thing. But the play powertrain was also brought not just to Nurburgring but also to uh, the uh, Laguna Seca racetrack in in California. And there, it apparently did break the record for uh, the fastest four-door sedan with a 136-second lap time. So that's impressive on its own. And that's when Tesla announced that that was the plate power train that did it. <coughs> Sorry. The plate power train and this new chassis prototype, whatever it is. And uh, yeah, and that's also when Elon announced that uh, it, more details will be re released about that plate power train soon. And it will come out. It, it is a year away, so not just next year, but a year away. So I would put it like summer, fall of 2020. Right, and that's uh, best case scenario. Yeah, it is. And you know what? I feel like if you if you release that new power train, you, you get, maybe it, will, it should match the Roadster release, right? Might as well. I mean, if you've got that power train. Um, I'd, I'd also wonder, like, uh, you know, we get a lot of criticism for talking about future uh, versions of the, the Model S and X. I wonder also if an announcing that they're going to have this power, this Plaid powertrain version in a year, I wonder if people who are thinking about buying a P100D uh, over the next year are going to delay that purchase and wait for the for this thing. Yeah, the Osborne effect. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was surprised about that too. Like, I didn't, I didn't get the point of all this this week. Like, why did they announce it this week? My only explanation is that, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to believe that it's about the Porsche taking. Like, that Tesla was so frustrated by the claims that Porsche made that they're like, oh, we need to come out strong this week. I don't, I don't think that is that that's what happened. Uh, I think maybe like going ahead of leaks. Like they thought, oh, it's gonna leak anyway, so we might as well release it now. Because they know it's gonna affect more S and X cells, but I feel like they might have already given up on trying to uh, bring back the cells until they have the refresh, and the refresh has all obviously been pushed. Now I think it makes more sense to match it with this plate portrait in the new chassis, and I, I, do, I think all of that also come off, of course with the new cells. I think when they're gonna switch to new cells from all S next program, new cells, new battery, whole new powertrain basically. Um, and now it sounds like all that is coming next year. So next year is going to be a big year for Tesla. I mean, a whole new refresh of, uh, and I, I think we can call it that at this point. Like the, if you have a new powertrain, and uh, I think the interior refresh is going to come at the same time too. 
new refresh of model s and x line model y is gonna come uh roadster uh, is of course up in the air because elon said it's not a priority but officially it's still on the 2020 timeline so roadster and didn't he say that uh i think uh mkbhd asked him if he was going to take the roadster to uh Nürburgring and uh elon replied next year yeah but so, that that bringing it to Nürburgring don't, doesn't give us much of an idea of the timeline right. to release though it's more about testing it's just like they're testing their play portrait right now and then the brain's not coming out till next year so i wouldn't put too many eggs in that basket right however uh tesla semi also supposed to be late 2020 so 2020s should be a massive year for tesla and uh that pickup truck uh now he's talking about november uh unveiling tesla normally tries to aim about a year from the unveiling the start production but now you're starting to load up the calendar a lot for 2020. Uh, this is going to be need a lot of hands on deck if they want to uh, keep to their timeline, which of course is, I mean, it's a contradiction by itself. Saying and don't forget, me. in November we're going to find out about the the pickup. That, that's what I just said. Oh, did you? Know? <laughs> <laughs> no, did I said, maybe I said truck or something, and you, you thought I was looking on the sign. Yeah. All right. One of the other. Um, Prototype that Tesla brought to Nurburgring. We, we just posted the image of it uh, today. It was spotted during the industry pool yesterday. And uh, we don't know what's inside of it. That, like I said, Tesla brought a bunch of different Model S's to, uh, to Nurburgring. And uh, we saw one the day before that that was uh, not, there was no visible changes from the outside, really. Uh, at least nothing except maybe for like the tires or something. Uh, so it looked like it might be just like a, a regular Raven uh, Model S. Maybe some modification inside. We don't know. But this one that we saw today, a uh, whole new fascia. So a uh, much bigger hair intake in front that almost cuts in half the, like the flat nose of the Model S. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, massive sporter, rear sporter in the back. Uh, and it's uh, it's one of those weird ones, like a NASCAR ones that just go straight up. Um, so unless Tesla is planning some kind of active sporter that changes if you're in the highway or something, or if you're in track mode, I don't think that's something that they're gonna ever brought to production. So there's that, and the also wider fender around the rear well, which tells me that. They have to have wider, uh, wider wheels, wider tires on, on on those cars too. That that's why they would uh, have a wider body around the, the fenders around the, the rear wells. It also looks like it sits a little lower. Uh, yeah, you're right. Definitely, definitely uh, lower suspension. So then the question is, why are they just like modifying modifying that car to get a great time on the Nurburgring track? Um. Maybe not sure why they would do that though, because again, they couldn't really claim Porsche's record because they do it with a highly modified, well, somewhat modified vehicle. Or is it maybe they're working on some kind of a uh, kit on like a uh, special version of the Mall S, like you said, like a Norb, maybe not a Norbering version, but like a track ready version of the Mall S. That could be like a new high end version of the car, mm -hmm. a Turbo S Model S. <laughs> if Tesla would yeah, really right. want to stick it to <laughs> to Porsche take the Taycan, they would go out and re release a Tesla Model S Performance Turbo S that that would really, with higher performance of the Taycan Turbo S. That'd be funny. All right. Uh, in other Tesla news, a new um, General Assembly line coming up in Fremont Factory. Uh, a look at uh, Tesla's building permit application at the Freeman factory. Um, we posted two articles on that this week because it unveils a bunch of stuff, including uh, the demo and rough grading. So the, uh, the basically the preparation work for a GA5. Uh, GA5, GA normally for Tesla means general assembly, general assembly line. Uh, for example, GA4 is the now and famous um, tent at Tesla, the, the, the product, the general assembly line under the tent for the Model 3. So a GA5 would mean another one. And uh, if there's 
rough grading happening, I have to assume that it's going to be outside the factory again. So it might be another tent going on here. I don't know. I mean, Elon has been raving about the tent for, for a year now. So I wouldn't be exactly surprised if they, uh, they do another tent. Well, and people have been arguing, is it really a tent? Because it's like, what would they call it? Like a, a, a something, a temporary structure or something like that? Yeah, I, I know that people will make fun of it if it's a ten mm. again, but yeah, it works. Like, uh, yeah, it's covered. I mean, I, I feel like those factories have so many doors, like huge open doors to the outside, that there's no way they can keep, you know, the temperature inside differently. So, you know, what's the point of? I don't know. It doesn't seem like a big deal. It's in California too, so right. I mean, Fremont does get a little bit cold in the winter, but. Uh, all right, so there's that coming up. And we assume, I mean, it doesn't mean that the new production line is going to be for the Model Y necessarily, but it's certainly uh, within the context of Tesla introducing Model Y production to um, Fremont fa Factory uh, next year because uh, Model Y and Model 3, they share a lot of parts and um, they, they need to figure out, the, the, they need to increase the production volume of both uh, f for all those parts. Uh, so... They, they're going to have to figure out a way to either, yeah, Model 3 have, having its own line and Model Y having its own line or just uh, both having the same car going down the same lines but still needing another line because Model Y, they expect it to be an even bigger production program than Model 3. I think the demand is going to be, I mean, didn't Elon say like between 500,000 and a million a year for the Model Y he expects? Yeah, I mean, it was supposed to be the biggest car, yeah, you know, bigger than all the other cars combined. Yeah. Which is, yeah. which is basically going to be bigger than the Model 3 plus a few extra Model S and X by the time it launches. Yeah, because if you look at the Model 3 program right right now, I mean, it, it's supposed to be to become bigger, especially with the start of uh, Gigafactory 3 in, in China. But most recently, they've been maintaining it really at, at 5,000 units a week, which is 250,000 units a year. Um, they could probably be like that to like 300,000 units a year. But until uh, Giga Factory 3 is online, well, once Giga Factory 3 is online, the Model 3 program will probably become a 500,000 units program per year as Tesla intended in the first place. But yeah, so Model Y, I agree, is going to be at least that. Maybe twice. That's, well, I don't think that's optimistic, but. All right, the other thing that we figured out from the building permit application this week is that Tesla is, build, is building the first rooftop solar array at Fremont Factory. That's something Tesla has been criticized about a little bit because they, they are a solar installer after all, especially since they bought uh, since they bought Solar City. And uh, they took their time to installing solar power at their own facilities, uh, especially the Giga Factory one, which uh, from the get-go, like back in 2013, you know, and said it's going to be fully powered by solar. And uh, it they only started installing the, the solar system in 2018. And even then, it's still not complete. Like, it's supposed to be like a 70 mega, megawatt system. And um, I don't think it's like a quarter of that, maybe. Anyway. I mean, the factory is not even complete. They have yeah. a couple more blocks to go, I think. Yeah. It's a third of the size, I think, of the final size they wanted. Fremont Factory, they have that since 2010, and they don't have uh, solar power on it. But we learned from the building permit application that Tesla is planning a solar array system, uh, at least on the admin uh, part of the building. So, in the when you when you arrive at the front of the Fremont factory, you have like uh, the Tesla store on one side, the building that sticks out from from the factory, and the, on the other side of that, in front of that, basically you have the Tesla admin building with all the offices and, the, and stuff are, are there for the people that work at the factory. Uh, so they're going to build a solar array on top of that. But that's still connected to the factory and everything. Yeah, I mean, that's if you look at your uh, the gallery in your post, mm -hmm. that's some flat area. But there's a lot of stuff on the roof. Yeah, you know, and in, in other places. I mean, obviously, this is an older factory. I mean, older 70s or 80s. But, um, you know, they have and it's been of, added to a bunch of times too. So right, so, so it's yeah, more it's of not, a retrofit. Yeah, it's the, the you're right. The roof are, are, are pretty weird, like a so uh, fitting a, a large array on top of that. It's not is not ideal. Um, and 
And I kind of feel like putting solar on the roof is kind of Tesla's last priority in terms of like things to get done. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, getting cars out the door, getting their whole like solar city acquisition sorted out. Uh, those seem like higher priorities. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess that's a built in, you're a built in customer for solar city if you do that. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but at the same time, my, my, my point with that is like, Tesla keeps saying like it makes financial sense to install the, the solar power. Like it just makes sense. You're gonna save money and everything. So uh, if they are themselves a large consumer right. of electricity, then then like you you become your best customer and start it on yourself and then save your money there. Right. So yeah, lead by example and stuff. So then that that stuff I like. The other thing that we figured out from the um, building permit application is a new 24 stall supercharger coming up at the Freeman factory. However. Doesn't sound like it's going to be a public one because uh, they say it's going to be located uh, behind the South Paint building. Uh, so the, the, the paint shop, the South Paint shop. So would that be for employees or would that be for new cars? Or I think it would be for new cars, I think, because Tesla already has another uh, a supercharger station that's uh, for like cars that could come out, come out of the factory. And if uh, they are increasing the output a lot, it would make sense to have more stalls. So that's probably hit in my opinion but i don't know for a fact i'm just going off of the building permit application which just says install 24 superchargers behind south paint new asphalt pavement provides site lighting and power to equipment and structural anchorage and equipment pad details so those um yeah. the, the, those building permit application they don't don't have much information on it it's like just like a s summary snippet of the whole thing Still, I thought it was worth no thing. Interesting stuff. All right. Pedestrian warning system. Uh, they are coming for all electric vehicles, people. They are uh, now part of the law in the US and in Europe. And um, we've seen a bunch of automakers already uh, implementing them, including Jaguar and uh, Mercedes Benz. Now, Tesla is joining the group uh, starting. September 1st, if your Model 3 has been produced September 1st, 2019 forward, it is equipped with the pedestrian warning system. We've been talking about that for a while because they've been discussing the law for a long time. But now in the US, it is regulation that new electric cars need to have um, a sound to alert the presence at up to 19 miles per hour. Per hour. <coughs> so yeah. The idea is that electric cars are so quiet at low speed. A higher speed doesn't matter much because it's more about uh, tire tire noise than uh, actual engine noises. So they, they figure out that you need a, a, a sound to alert of the presence. And uh, we know that Tesla was working on it because we saw like uh, on the underbody panel in the front of the car, there was a perforated panel like a, for a speaker. There wasn't a speaker in there, but they were ready for it. Since September first, we posted an article. Uh, we posted all the the imagery of the system on the track. But now the system, the speaker system, is inside the, the car and it's emitting sound uh, when uh, you are driving at speeds lower than 19 miles per hour. Um, it's not ideal. I mean, especially if you look at some of the even the gasoline engine cars these days some of them are very quiet at low speed they are extremely quiet um uh, maybe yeah, not the the jury's kind of still out on whether or not those help uh uh, uh vision impaired people see or you know hear uh cars coming be aware think, of the presence yeah i mean i think that the rolling tire noise um and the other kind of stuff is enough if you're you know if if you're a, a normal sighted person maybe you don't notice it because you're not so acutely listening for that kind of stuff if you're you know like on a sidewalk and you're crossing a road and you know you're you can't see you're obviously listening a lot mm -hmm. better than some you know normal person who's you know a, a normal sighted person that uh is crossing the road so I don't know. I haven't seen any studies that say that the sound is actually better or not. NHTSA claimed that they have. 
it's a claim that you have studies that shows that uh, yeah. pedestrian sound actually have a positive impact. However, I just um, now I don't like uh, like how how thorough are those studies because they, they they started publishing that in like 2015 or something when there weren't that many electric cars on the road and everything. So I don't know. Also, it's kind of weird. There's that there's not a standardized sound, and like frankly, that would be horrible if there was, but. You know, it's kind of strange that there isn't something. And then, you know, like, okay, so there's not a standardized sound. Can you make it? Like, can you pick your sound? You know, like yeah, you can. You can pick can your you... sound. So they all have like, a different sound now. So you could pick a, you know, a blank sound, or you could pick, you know, lud <laughs> ludicrous. You know, you could pick a lot of crazy stuff. Oh, exactly. okay, okay. No, you mean the you mean the driver picks the sound? I thought, yeah. I thought like the automaker. No, the, the automakers can have all different sounds. Like, yeah, I didn't get that. You mean the driver can pick the sound? Like, yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, some sounds are not uh, wouldn't bother you as much, but you, you're not supposed to hear them if like you have your windows closed and everything. So it's supposed really just to be from outside uh, for people outside the vehicle. And Tesla sounds are not too bad. They're different from the backing sound and then going forward, so you know like a difference. And uh, uh, the backing sound sounds more like a truck backing sound, right? Not as aggressive uh, as that, but and the the moving forward sound is basically just like the sounds of a Tesla motor, but amplified a little bit. So as if maybe like a Tesla motor that when it's driving at more than twenty miles per hour or whatever. All right, the um, Ardware 3, 3.0 uh, full self-driving computer retrofit program tentative, tentatively, tentatively started this week. Uh, we got confirmation from an owner. We got we got it in his Model S, Model S uh, 2.5. However, it's starting very slow, right? So don't 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 request it from Tesla if you're you're supposed to have one. And of course, if people who are supposed to have one are people that bought the full self-driving package. If you have a Tesla vehicle and you bought the full self-driving package, you are um, eligible for the full self-driving computer retrofit. Uh, of course, if you bought a full self-driving package, uh, if, you, if you bought a car from April, uh, March from OS Next, right? What was it? Uh, right yeah. Around um, for Model S and X, it's around March twentieth, and for Model Three, it's around April twelfth. So those cars, they already have the FSD computer in it. But for people that bought our car from uh, Autopilot two point which was October two thousand sixteen, up to those days that I just mentioned, uh, if you have bought the software full self driving package, you are allowed to get the full self driving computer upgrade. But the guy that who got it, so this is apparently making group of um, like group one, group two, and everything for for people to get it. So right now they're in group one, and your car needs to already be in service. So if you're already scheduled to go to service for something else, and your car is within the first group, then they are going to, uh, I assume, with availability of the of the computer, of course, uh, upgrade your car. Elon said that eventually it was good mobile service, so don't you don't need to bring your car to service but right now they are of course trying to limit uh the work needed to, to get it done and you know of course if the car is already in service that that helps a lot of that that reduced the amount of hours needed to do to do it because it's going to be a massive massive retrofit program i mean technically there are hundreds of thousands of cars that are eligible for, for that program if they buy the fsc we don't have numbers on how many people bought the fsc package the last time i got them was like i think early 2018 and it was like a 35 percent take rate i assume that that's way up by now since people since uh, tesla launched the fsd computer since tesla um uh, started talking more about what they're doing with, with the full self-driving uh what uh since the autonomy event thing i think all, all those things are starting to uh, increase the fsd take rate so i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if it's in the hundred of thousands uh, so Tesla needs to not only make computers for the new, well, Tesla, I mean, they were made with Samsung, I think. Uh, they need not only to make enough uh, new computers for new cars, which is like 6,000 a week, 
they also need to make some for this to accumulate uh, and retrofit to the to the new retrofit program. So a lot of work, but it is starting. So uh, I think it's gonna take more than a year, easy. But at yeah, the same good. time, you have to keep in mind that there's not the big difference upgrading right now because the Tesla software is just not um, advanced enough, and then the self-driving software is not advanced enough that you don't necessarily need the capacity of the of the new uh, the new computer. So it's not that big of a deal if you don't get it right away. But it's a cool-looking, shiny computer. Someone in the comments when on that article that I wrote. They brought up something interesting said and uh, i don't know if you have any ideas about that they said that uh what are they gonna do with the holder computers which are still pretty powerful computers and they're gonna right. like i just said Nvidia. end up with hundreds of thousands of them so uh what what kind of cool things you think you could make with that uh i mean it doesn't include the screen right it's just the computer yeah it's just the computer power it's just the graphic that's, cards yeah that's and the uh, motherboard but it's like yeah. it's Nvidia, like hardcore Nvidia stuff, right? Yeah, because you can make like some kind of a super powerful AI computer. You can make like uh, crypto miners. You oh, can that's make, right. Uh, you can make things like that. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I feel like Tesla is too creative a company not to figure out something. They could just recycle them too, maybe. Like you know. I, I don't think yeah. so. No, there's just too many of them. Like it, it would it would crash the market for like re, uh, refurbish Nvidia graphic cards. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can <laughs> suck off any of those parts, but um, but, you know, I'm sure I, the graphic cards are still good. Like you can refurbish. Yeah, them. I mean, I guess a crypto miner would just buy all hundred thousand or whatever of them and set up a a big uh, mining rig. I guess. I mean, yeah. that that would be worth more than recycling them by itself. Probably. Yeah, it'd be Maybe Tesla get in the, into the business on its own. Right. Get some get some Ethereum. Yeah, some yeah. solar solar powered uh mining yeah. rigs going. That's might be why they are putting solar power in the factory. Right. Who knows? All right. The ID three officially launched this week at the Frankfurt to show. So we saw for the first time the final production version of the car. Looking sweet. I think it looks nice. Looking sharp. Do you like those wheels though? Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing that I'm not a fan of. Uh, it looks like a beautiful hatch. Very much golf-looking uh, car. I like how but, the hatch wraps around the, the, the rear light. Yeah, pattern. yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, and all the, the, the roof flows uh, all the way back to like a, a rear sporter of a, uh, made from the roof. It looks cool. Uh, so I know I bring this up quite a bit, but it just again shows you like how badly Chevy dropped the ball with the bolt because it's pretty much the same body type as a Chevy bolt. It's a little bit wider, a little bit longer, not as tall, but pretty much the kind of the same body shape as a bolt. And, you know, Chevy had this, what, four years ago uh, or three years ago and very limited sales. Obviously, uh, VW is coming in with lower prices, but they're bad. They're, manufacturing this at huge scale so and you know they're not even bringing them out till next summer so to me it's kind of like well chevy had something similar to this three years ago they could have really had they really updated it a lot they could have really theoretically had a market leader and uh, you know obviously this is designed better inside and well definitely inside but outside definitely as well so I don't know. It just uh, to me, it's like a missed opportunity for Chevy seeing this come out. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. But coming back, especially to the ID three here, uh, it's going to be available in three different variants: the basic variant, uh, the mid range one, and the long range one. And the first ones is going to be available um, as the ID three first editions. It's um, the mid range one, which is equipped with the fifty eight kilowatt hour battery pack. They say it's going to be 420 kilometers, uh, but that's WLTP. So give or take a few mm. dozen kilometers. Um, it's going to be equipped with an 11 kilowatt AC charger. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, 100 kilowatt DC fast charging capacity. 
which uh, now on par with what people are coming out these days. As I mean, these days you don't see much uh, under 150, but you're, you're talking about a smaller batch pack here, 58 kilowatt hours. So, I mean, there are quite a few under 100 kilowatt, like you know, in Europe, the uh, the Renault Zoe, the new one that we're that Michael's reviewing now, uh, is 50 kilowatt. Um, disappointing. Um, so it's it's not alone. I mean, I think the Honda is also very low, but um, you know, it's it is what it is. This isn't a high end car. Yeah, uh, I, we don't have all the details about pricing. Like they, they've been re slow releasing those. That because I think it's gonna be like uh, it's not that cheap. I think it's gonna be like closer to thirty five thousand euros starting with. Um. For that mid-range version, the, the the standard version, the basic version, is going to be one that starts at thirty thousand euros, which is the equivalent of about thirty thousand, thirty-three thousand US. And uh, that version has a uh, only a forty-five kilometer batch pack. They say uh, WLTP two hundred thirty kilometers, so about three hundred kilometers car here, uh, which is not that good for uh, thirty thousand euros. I mean, uh, it's. I thought it would be more competitive than that. Uh, I thought it would be like more competitive than the, like the Nissan Leaf or something, but it's it's around the same um, capacity uh, for uh, price a little bit uh, more expensive. So I don't know. And the long range version, seventy seven kilometer batch pack. So now now you're talking, uh, and that's significant. And that, that goes up to uh, like two hundred forty um, miles, uh, five hundred fifty kilometers. So that's a lot. And they boost the charging rate to 125 kilowatt which again yeah it's a little bit better but I, I would have liked to see like 150 i don't know why they cannot do 150 when uh how they can do it like how do is is volkswagen so uh, but still the uh interior looks pretty good nothing incredible some something that we expect for like a I don't know. I'm, I feel a little bit over uh, underwhelmed by the whole thing. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, I mean, it's 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 supposed to be the the low end, not the low end, but the you know, value option. Uh, you know, I I don't think it's that bad. I I kind of see a little bit of Tesla Model Three inspiration in the the dash. Um, you know, it's very yeah, but you know that the the user interface is going to be like a third as good as Tesla or something like that. Like it's Unless there's a big improvement, but the guess with the makers and normally, uh, it's not yeah. there. Uh, I mean, some people thing. actually, you know, that they don't use computers a lot or something, but they don't like uh, Tesla's interface and they like the traditional interface, you know, multiple traditional interfaces of traditional car companies. I'm not in that group, but I know people like that. Maybe this is going to be something that they like. Hmm. I definitely like the play button on the accelerator and the pause button on the. Yeah, accelerator. I thought it was a joke, <laughs> but it looks like it's actually it's actually on the on the car. So you think they would do the stop button though? Why why pause? Uh, whatever, same deal, hmm. same thing, I guess. Yeah, looks like a cool um, car. I would love to love to drive one. Yeah, yeah, we need we need to to get inside the car and. Uh, yeah, the proper look to to give a, a full opinion on it, but uh, right now I'm like um, I'm just a little bit curious, to, like how it's gonna sell really in, in the market because I I like the, they're clearly framing it to be an important car, high volume vehicle and everything. It's just uh, uh, I, I thought it would be priced a little bit more aggressively than that. I mean, there'll, there'll be incentives. Oh yeah, that's that's right. I mean. Uh, it, Especially uh, like Norway would probably make or break that that car because Norway loves the Golf. Golf was the best selling cars for years before electric cars came. Uh, still, the E Golf sells very well there. So that that that's the heat Golf killer basically. And um, we'll we'll see how it performs in Norway. If it performs well in Norway, the car's gonna probably do well. All right, next one is uh, Mercedes Benz EQS. EQS. So their first electric all electric sedan prototype. Yeah, that's very much concept. a concept car. Um, but of course, they plan an electric sedan to come with, and uh, the Mercedes EQC concept came out, and then the next year they unveiled the production version of that. It was heavily based on it, so you can 
make out some of the design features features however it, it, it looks very much like a concept right now mm -hmm. doesn't especially the interior the interior is like yeah all right that's never gonna happen <laughs> but uh as for the specs also that, that that's why i'm throwing me off a little bit because I, they're supposed to cut out that car like within the next two years or something and they're claiming the, they are setting the bar pretty high for the specs right now um 350 kilowatt motor dual motor powertrain um range of 435 miles 700 kilometers uh wltp no so let's say let's Not say gonna happen. 380 miles real road range yeah that's that's a lot uh, 350 kilowatt charging. Porsche was supposed to come out with that. That didn't happen. Went down to 270. So, I mean, I want them to come out with that because it, otherwise it looks weird. Like, they, they bring out this concept of a car that we know they're planning to release the EQS in the next two years or something. So, it would be weird for them. Like, uh, here's the car. Here's what it's capable of doing. Then they come out with the production version. Oh, by the way, we're down to uh, 300 miles of range and uh 250 kilowatt of charging but that's kind of what borsch did yeah you're right that's what he did i don't uh, know i don't see i mean and i was with, disappointed by it too <laughs> the thing with the concept car though is like you just make up stuff you know like like those seats there's no way in the world that those seats are going to see production but they're making up you know that they have a fantasy this is a fantasy car so they put fantasy specs on it. It's a fantasy, but well, no basis in reality. Yeah, they, they didn't outright say that that's going to be the production spec, so that that's fair. Porsche, they did say that like the three hundred fifty uh, kilowatt charging was coming. Like that, that that they did say. So yeah, and and to be fair, they this is still coming. They say it's still coming, although you're gonna have to pay extra for it, and there's gonna be like six chargers in the world that'll be capable of doing it. But it's you know they're really doing it. Um, I, I just wonder, like, okay, so th they're saying it's going to go 400, what, how many miles? 435 miles. So, like, what kind of, it's going to have a 150 kilowatt hour battery pack or something? No, no, no. 120, you can do that. 120? Yeah. I mean, that's with a, an efficient car. This does not look like an efficient car. <sighs> Mercedes and BMWs are not efficient cars. Yeah. So, anyway. I, I don't think 435 is realistic, especially now. I mean, yeah. what's the Tesla like? Uh, EPA is like 370 now on 100, right. 100 Yeah, but that's that's, that's an, an efficient, efficient car, car. Yeah. I mean, right now, uh, Porsche, Audi, Jaguar are having trouble getting like much beyond 200 miles. But again, I come back to the fact they're doing that with their big battery reserve thing, which I think is right. an overkill because they're not confident yet in their battery pack manufacturing capability, like longevity of their battery pack. Right. Uh, basically, they are over engineering the battery pack because they are afraid of uh, how long the battery cells will last. That I, I, I think that's their, their thinking. Uh, within time and within having cars on the road for a while, I think they will grow in confidence and maybe eventually reduce that large battery reserve that they have on, on, on those cars that, that of course, reduce the, the efficiency a lot. So uh, I'm optimistic about that. But at the same time, like, um, the other way could go around too if uh, if they actually, like, over-engineer and failed in doing so. For example, the Audi, which got a battery recall real quick, over a uh, 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 default on the battery pack, so. But the, apparently, some the sales are pretty good now for the e tron so uh, we'll see. Uh, at least in Europe, in Europe, the sales are pretty, pretty good, and they're ramping up in the U.S. too. So, we'll see. All right, the on the e at the Frankfurt Auto Show, they uh, released the. This is a first production version, but I mean, they released like three different prototype of that thing, and they all look very much the same to me, <laughs> but. This new one also looks very close to what we saw last uh, uh, earlier this year, actually, and last year too when they unveiled another one, but probably more different than that one. Anyway, they announced the pricing for the first time. They gonna they were saying that it's gonna be an affordable uh, vehicle, and uh, sure enough, 
uh, they were talking about 32, uh, not starting at 29,000 euros, but that's in, in Germany, including the, the, sub, the subsidy, uh, subsidy. So 32,400 32, um, euros. Well, wait a minute. Like, you know, no, that's, no, that's for the, higher, the faster version. Okay, so uh, so they just said twenty nine thousand five hundred euros. That's including the four thousand. Uh, right, so that's the equivalent of around thirty three thousand US. Yeah, basically. Uh, that's which, for, which, yep. for that spec of car. So I guess it's a good deal. Like a, it's kind of going up against the Mini E now, and that's going to be similarly priced. Um, it doesn't have quite the range that you would kind of expect for thirty thousand, but. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty car. I want to see the Nissan Leaf price in Germany. The new one? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, they're listing me used one. What is it? Used one. Is the Nissan Leaf sold in Germany? I'm sure. Because I feel like that's going against that too. I mean, it's a little bit smaller, like city car like, but I feel like the price has to be pretty close to 30,000 euros too. And uh, I would definitely go for a leave over that, in my opinion. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of people buy cars based on the look. Yeah, yeah almost sure. exclusively. And this does have an interesting look. I think a lot of people like it. Interior is awesome. Looks great. Right. Interior looks very sharp. Large queen screen that wraps around the car. Looks very good. Uh, I like the seats. Like a ritual feel to it. Offered with a glass roof. But yeah, the powertrain, 35.5 kilometer battery, 125 miles of range. Mm. It's uh it's it sounds 2016 to me, but right. And that car, again, just like the ID3, I probably going for it. it's launching right now. Production version is launching right now, but sales are starting in 2020, summer 2020. They are accounting the sales until then. And I have to assume that it is has to do with the EU uh, regulations. They are they, they they want those cells to count for that, and uh, um, it ramps up next year for the emission regulation in the in Europe. They also released a few other things uh, on the at the Frankfurt show. They showed their new uh, on the power charger, which is their own charging station. Um, offered as a single phase 7.4 kilowatt station or a three phase 22 kilowatt station. So, depending on your needs, uh, you can buy that. That's the charging station with um, the Honda E. And they had the Honda Power Manager, which is a bi directional charger. So, apparently, the Honda E is going to be able to do a vehicle to grid, vehicle to own, I should say. Oh, what did, what did I say vehicle to grid. All right. Um, they're gonna have a trial for that. Like Nissan has the same thing, but it's limited to some market where, where it actually makes sense to 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 have that capacity to use your your car energy capacity uh, to power your home or to send energy back to the grid. And uh, they're gonna do a trial next year when when the car comes out. They're gonna release that new uh, Honda Power Manager and uh, do some trial with it, and then we'll see about the commercial com commercialization of the product. The uh, Renault QZ E QZ. All right, I'm thinking I'm pronounce it like that. <laughs> it's a little all electric crossover we talked about last year. Uh, when Renault launched it last year, we weren't impressed by the power train at all. The power train is like 190 kilometers, 118 miles of range. Um, it, it's um, very small car too. Like uh, the, the the format is a little bit deceiving. It looks like uh, I'm also in a SUV, but it's a very small crossover, more more like bolt styles, um, bolt EV styles. But they they framed it, they emphasized the fact it's gonna be affordable. People, so I'm like, okay, uh, the power, I'm not impressed by powertrain, everything. Uh, but if it is affordable, like yeah, it could, it could be a good car. And they released the price this week with the production version in China. It's nine thousand dollars. People, crazy. Yeah, so sixty six thousand yuan. Which is equivalent about um, ten thousand dollars, nine thousand four hundred dollars, and uh, of course I assume that that's within with subsidies because then that would be crazy. So it's probably closer to fifteen twenty thousand dollars, but which is still pretty good. Like there's not that many EVs out there for for, for that price. Um, 
it, it looks kind of cheap, people. Like, you know, like it's not in the interior. Like, it, but it has to. I mean, it has to be cheap. Exactly, it has to be. Uh, there are plenty of other cheap gasoline car out there for that price. So now they have a competition all electric, though it is the range is limited. But for a city car, it's it's plenty of range. Uh, the power is also very limited. A 33 kilowatt electric motor. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in the well, EV. Yeah, on motor. Oh, you mean not motorcycles? Yeah, <laughs> well, it's not a motorcycle. Uh, yeah, you're right. Like the the like in the life order is uh, is around that, right? Right, a little bit more, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so also, this is a, a a vehicle for China. So even though Renault is the the make of it. Um, it's made by Renault's partner in in China. It's made for the Chinese market, so it's got like zero global release. Yeah, eventually, but yeah. this this particular one is a Chinese yeah. car. It hasn't been, uh, you know, th theoretically, there's not going to be uh, the same type of airbags and safety tests um, as like a car in in Europe or the U.S. But you know, like. Uh, that sells well there. Uh, you could retrofit some, stuff or change the design a little bit, uh, add some weight, add some framing, and maybe it maybe it works in the U.S. I mean, like I feel like if the car came out looking like this and sold for a very low price, like this one is, I feel like it would do quite well. Probably. However, you have to take into account, like, it's not just, like, you're right. They're probably, like, the safety features. They don't need to be as um, thorough as a, a car that's approved for the U.S. market or even the European market. Uh, so that could affect the pricing. But uh, also, you have to look at the battery pack here. It's a 26.8 uh, kilowatt battery pack using ternary lithium cells from Tijin Lich in, in China, which are known to be, like, cheaper, much cheaper cell right. than that. Uh, than uh, uh, an AMC or NCA uh, lithium ion cell. So uh, I would I would be curious to see how many cycles that thing lasts and everything. So there's there's other things to take into account. But if it lasts, it, if the degradation is not too much after like a hundred thousand miles or something, yeah, and they can get the price to something closer at like. Fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars before incentive, and then they get the incentive. Then yeah, 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 you could you can definitely launch that in the in the U.S. for sure. And like frankly, if it never even comes to the U.S. in the Western Europe or Europe in general, like it's still going to be on the streets of China and India. India too, it's coming India, yeah, so yeah. It's have an so impact. It's going to have an impact. Big impact. So great and great for Renault. Yeah, yeah it's gonna. It, it should turn some gas mileage into electric mileage, which is the most important thing. All right. We're going to hand on the good news for Rivian. They um, raised some more cash. I mean, they cannot stop raising cash. Those people, it's insane. Uh, since um, the well, Cox Automotive, if you don't know Cox Automotive, they're, they're big. Uh, they, they have a bunch of very well-known brands like uh, the Kitty Blue Book and uh, is it uh, auto uh, auto trader and uh, all that? They, they own all that stuff. So uh, a bunch of uh, cars related service auction um, buying um, tutorial experience and stuff like that. They're big on that. Of course, Kitty Blue Book is uh, uh, the, the the standard in the U.S. for for car pricing and stuff like that. Anyway. They invested 350 million in Rivian, which is uh, which is a lot, and uh, it adds to uh, the, the basically the whole round of investment that they made this year since unveiling the cars last November. In 2019 alone, this 350 million dollar investment, after the Amazon investment, the Ford investment, brings the total investment to over 1.5 billion in 2019. That's a lot of money. And we were hearing that they were already somewhat well funded before unveiling the cars that the, the, the pickup truck, the R1T and the R1S SUV last year. So it's a private company. We don't know their finances, but I would speculate that they are sitting on a lot of cash and uh, getting ready to bring those cars to production. I'm also thinking that they are <clears throat> sorry, sitting on a lot of reservations too. So 
combine that to the launch of production and they're going to start bringing some money. So maybe it was a good investment for, for Amazon and for, for Ford. Uh, I'd like to know how much, um, uh, how big of a stake Amazon and Ford got out of those investments because uh, Amazon invested uh, 750 million, 700 million, and uh, million. Ford invested 500 million. Yeah, I mean, it's already a multi billion dollar company. So, like, theoretically, they should be able to make some cars. Oh yeah, 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 uh, and and you have to keep in mind that before all that, before unveiling the cars, before raising that money, they already had a factory, a factory that used to produce cars from from Mitsubishi, right? And they were already working on retrofitting that factory to make it ready to produce their electric cars, and uh, that was like three years ago or something. Yeah, three years ago they bought the factory. Of course, they they weren't there because they, the cars, the prototypes weren't even ready. So you don't, you you need a product. To be able to set up the manufacturing to know exactly what you're gonna make, but they did. I'm already. I'm sure they were already working on sub subsystem that they, they were already ready for production. But most of the work that happened in the last year now that they have their truck that they want to bring to production. But uh, if I was to bet on the company on a on an electric car startup that keeps their timeline and their timeline right now is uh, end of 2020, uh, I would bet on Raven for sure to, to keep that timeline. But I'm also giving them some leeway if they. Do slip a few, uh, like within six months. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't criticize them too much about that because I mean we've seen, we've seen uh, Faraday Future slip out for like two years now, three years maybe. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Lucid Motors. I think Lucid Motors uh, said 2018 originally, uh, so they are probably delayed for a year now. But now I think they're seeing 2021. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Rivian is uh is well set up, and I'm still ex I have my reservation still. I'm still excited about that. I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna go through with it, but did you reserve the pickup or the SUV? The pickup truck. All right. Yeah, I want an electric pickup truck. I think I think it would be fun uh, to have an electric pickup truck to go camping with it or something to go in the woods and bring my my Surin bike on with it. Right. Uh, so you can go like electric truck, electric bike in the back and just go with it. But um, yeah. We'll see. I mean, there's going to be other option at this point. When when it comes out, it looks like it's going to Tesla is going to aim to come out around the same time with the pickup truck. I'll see what Tesla got because uh, it's not going to be cheap. The Rivian. I mean, you start at sixty nine thousand bucks, but uh, that's the base version with the uh, like what hundred kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, I might want the hundred and eighty to get that that, that long range. Uh, I mean, I don't need that long range as much, but if you're towing something, if you have like a, a load in the back you, now, that's when you need that energy capacity. So. That's a huge battery. I mean, that'll power your house, your house for like weeks. Yeah. So that's interesting that you're going to be driving around a 180 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah. All right. That's pretty much all for us this week, everyone. Thanks a lot for listening. Thanks a lot for watching on YouTube. We're going to see you uh, same place, same time next week. Ciao.